if I'll keep an eye on it. So, as chair of the Rochester Select Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive order 01-20 and act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. In accordance with Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are making um, public access to the meeting using the Zoom platform. And you can find access to these meetings by going to the town website, um, looking at the posted um, notices throughout the town or asking the direct link sent to you and there's somebody else that wants to get in. <clears throat> and boy, you know, when we stop doing Zoom, I, when will I ever say the word contemporaneously again? I don't know. We'll, don't know. we'll have to bring it up. <laughs> Daily. <laughs> All right. Um, so at this point, does anyone have any additions to the posted agenda? Going once, going twice, Dune. gone. Dune. Yeah. Terry's here and wants to talk about lawn mowing. All right. And you have me down. Do I? Do you need my topic? No, we're just you're here as a guest. All right. You're on the agenda already. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So let's start with the. Um, the meeting minutes for in the prior meetings, if we have two sets, um, April 26th, um, did everyone have a time to, to plow through those minutes? Yes. Yep. Yeah, I did. Yep. They're, I'm okay with their. Yeah, me too. I, I'd, I'd move to accept them as presented. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then we have the um, um, May 10th minutes and was the meeting on the 10th or the 11th? 11th. 11th, right. So there's a little bit of a um, mistake in there. But, um, um, wait a second. Wasn't it on Monday, Monday night? It was the 10th. It was the 10th. All right, the minutes must have been typed up on the 11th. The 11th. Okay, all right. So the meeting was. <clears throat> in the, the list of uh, people that attended the meeting, um, it did not list Peter Jensen, Kinley Tenner, or Jeff Gephardt. I thought maybe they should be added in. Add those guys, yep. And I had a question also, um, Jeff, you're here, you could clarify. It said the date for the um, the Mo demo, electric me, electric Mo demo as being May 27th, is that correct? Yep. Okay, just wanna check that. 11 out. to 2 p.m. All right. It's, so with the additions of the other attendees to the meeting added to the minutes i'd move to accept those minutes i second that all in favor aye aye okay cool and we got um i don't see kirk white here but sue you are um on the agenda as a guest and and what what's on your mind um yeah i uh wanted to request um uh, the use of a very small portion of the park for 4th of July um, to have a booth. And um, you're all familiar, I think, with the Rochester High School Repurposing Committee. Um, there's a small part of that, which is the Arts and Learning Committee, which I'm on. And um, we've decided, uh, and this has nothing to do with using the high school. In fact, we've decided we're gonna stay a committee no matter what happens. So. Um, we know that there's a lot of summer events coming up and we didn't have any events last year. So we really want to give um, the presenters um, a boost by um, highlighting all the things that are going on this summer between the library and the players and um, Pierce Hall, et, et cetera. And so uh, we're putting together a, um, a compilation calendar and it'll be available. Uh, we're gonna have a booth, um, like a 10 by 10 booth, maybe over toward uh, Park House during the barbecue. And okay. um, 
secondly, because we are arts and musicians, we thought it would be nice to have some music. And now that uh, the rules are a little looser with COVID, um, I called just in case to ask Jake and his friends if he might play on the gazebo. So that's my second request is to use the gazebo. Um, for here's music. my question for you, Sue. Um, are you talking about Sunday, July 4th? Yes. Okay, that's during the I'm barbecue thinking. and the bar because the barbecue is during the day. There's a concert that evening on the bar on the park too. Yeah. But that's okay. Great, thank you. Sorry, I just want to make sure. So yeah. you're thinking the, during the barbecue and then music during the barbecue, if if possible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So did I see a a, a park use application? Yes. Yeah. I sent yeah. One in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, I don't know if you saw it, but well, right. which one is which one is it? Because it just says Pierce Hall. No, no, this is this is separate. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's not on the um, on the new business here, but it's in there. So I, I, I um, thought I thought also. Yeah, it is Dune. It is in there. Just high Dune. school it's, repurposing committee. That's who's yeah, requesting that's the it one. because they're official. I only have four things on my on the Me agenda too. I had. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't see any. I don't see anything about um, learning committee or arts and learning committee or anything. I uh, there. Do you have any questions? I, I think I pretty much said what's on the application. Yeah, I see it there, Sue. Everything seems all right. Yeah, I think that um, I, I, I approve of that. I, I'd move to approve that. I second it. All in favor? All right. OK. Great, thank you. Right, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, Martha Slater, you're also listed as a guest. Did you have? Okay, yes, and I'm down. It's down under new business. Um, this is my formal application for, on behalf of the players. I'm co-producer of the Harvest Fair, mm -hmm. and it would be Saturday, September 11th, which is going to be actually 20 years to the day from the infamous September 11th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, well. so, because it's we always have it the Saturday after Labor Day, and we we didn't have our have the fair last year so we'd okay. like to be able to do it this year and we think we can um so i'm hoping that that's okay with um the select board i would think that by that time september or there were the governors talking about relaxing a lot of the restrictions after july 4th and it's um you know it's uh I assume it would maybe be laid out in a little more spread out manner. Yeah, we well, we have it, you know, you know, I mean, obviously we've had 30 some odd fairs now, you know, you can just walk through and it's a lot easier to keep your distance from people unless it gets super crowded. Um, and um, we figure we'll just do the best we can and it'll be outdoors. And by then we're hoping that a majority of the people in the state will be vaccinated and um, we're hoping for the best. Well, but we'd like we'd like think? we'd like to have the fear again if if you're if you're okay with it. Frank, Pat, you guys have any thoughts? Just stay off the front as much as possible. We're still I'm a little concerned with the grass there. That's all. Yeah, well, we're going to be having the stage over by Huntington House like we normally do, and then there would be the the a flower show on the bandstand and. Um, the entry gate would be over on the corner by the, by the skip mark. But yeah, we're going to try to put most of it like on like two thirds, the two thirds of the fair of the, excuse me, of the park that's towards the Huntington House side, yes. Yeah, that would be great. Could um, avoid the use of the front as much as possible. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. I, so I'd, I'd move to approve that application. I second it. All in favor? Aye. All right. Right. We thank you very much. Well, we thank you for um, pushing forward with that. Um, good. So, um, well, while we're doing all these um, approvals or applications for park use, we might as well just finish them up before we jump into Jones since we started there. So we also have an application for the 4th of July for um, Pierce Hall having their barbecue. So I um I moved to approve that. It, didn't we already do that? <laughs> I thought we did, but it's on the agenda again. So we'll. Um, oh, it is. Yeah. I thought there was a Rochester School Seniors thing. Um, yeah. There's one of those too. Yeah. It looks oh, like is there? I didn't. I don't have the other one then. I guess. 
Yeah. Now that's, I have a question about that. It says for graduation celebration. And then someone told me that they thought Claudia Sherwin, who's Jill, whose daughter Jillian is graduating for Sharon this year, was organizing this. So I was wondering, is this supposed to be a public event or is it a private event or do you have any idea? It's on the I, application. Um, it's, it sounded to me when reading it, it was just for, um, you know, to help the, the, graduation and probably some alumni just celebrate graduation you know so it's probably it's probably just high school seniors purpose, on the application purpose of event celebrate our kids with the community i think so, that's wonderful so, i'm going to try to get in touch with her to, to write something separate about it for the paper yeah so um, I, I i'd move to approve that one i second that all in favor all right, all right. okay and we already did the um, Pierce Hall last time. All right, um, so we're doing the um, kind of boomerang um, agenda attack. So Joan, <laughs> um, what have you got for us tonight in your updates? What I got, um, uh, three items. Uh, first, uh, you remember Rogers Brook, which is, might be the last culvert the town has on Bethel Mountain Road going down towards Camp Brook. Um, yeah. Back in December, I put in an application, uh, was the second attempt for uh, a grant to replace that culvert. Yeah. And uh, it was denied a second time. Um, so I talked to Cricket about it um, because if you remember, Hutchins did repair work on that uh, site yeah. Yeah. back in 2019. Um, primarily what they did is, is dump a whole lot of rock on the outlet side of the culvert, which is at a really steep slope. And uh, there was a huge sinkhole there that was uh, being created over time by a perch, cul the culverts perched really high up. And so it was just digging a big hole underneath it. So uh, with that, uh, they dumped a lot of rock there and, and Cricket feels that even though it's, it's not the prettiest thing, and the culvert itself is a, is a bit undersized and does need to be replaced because it's kind of corroding. It's not in any danger and she feels it'll stay, the slope itself will stay stable for a good long time. So um, I would propose that that project just sort of be put on the back burner and uh, keep an eye on it. And maybe, you know, when funding is improved and towns aren't all frantic to get work done, um, there'll be more room for us to apply for a grant and, and replace it then. Okay. Okay. Um, so the next thing up is uh, the bid process has start is about to start for the retaining wall, which along with those uh, five stone line ditching projects that uh, went out to bid and are being awarded now um, is the final FEMA project from 2019. Um, Cricket has just finished the plans. Uh, I've sent a bid advertisement to the Herald this morning and just want to give you a couple of dates. You don't have to remember the second one because I'll remind you of it later. But there's going to be a pre-bid pre meeting, sorry, pre-bid meeting on June 2nd at 10 a.m. Uh, if Frank or anyone else uh, wants to be there. Um, and I will, I'll come in for that also. Um, and then the bids will be due June 28th. Uh, and the project needs to be done sometime this summer. Um, and it does have a, a stream alteration permit. So we've got a deadline. I think it's October 1st. I'm working in the stream. Any questions on that? No, and we have uh, the design set for that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Cricket just completed that. Okay. that. <clears throat> And there'll be a set of bid, a uh, set of plans available in the town office. And I've also, or Cricket is going to be posting it on the state procurement site. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully we'll get a lot of good bids coming in for that one. Um, and then lastly, uh, as far as I know, those uh, four hemlocks were planted on fr last Friday. They, yes? they were, Joan, I, I checked. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> where where were they planted? Where he, were they planted? Put, on the he Henry put two property. on this side of the brook on the house side, and he put two on the on the other side. 
Right. On, on which yeah. property? I'm sorry, I didn't hear Henry you. on Brook Street. Henry. On the Henry property. Of Pink yes, Pink. it's a camp, the camp property. Um, it's a huge amount of work for a small project, but uh, I'm really glad that it's been done and I will let the Henrys know and I, I think they'll be pleased with the results. Okay. That was the last item for the Bethel Mountain Road uh, uh, rebuild. And the only thing we're waiting for is our final payment from the state, which should be coming yep. at the end of the month. <coughs> the end of May or the end of June? Uh, end of May. Oh. Now, of course, all right, all I'm right. not promising, <laughs> but all everything has been signed and delivered. <coughs> and it's just in the queue now um, at the controller's <laughs> office or whoever writes the checks for the state. Mm -hmm. So we might see it in the next week. All right, good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Joan. Um, yeah, sure. Perry, you were here. You wanted to um, talk about um, lawn mowing? Yeah. The mowing hasn't been done. <coughs> uh, down back to school, they've done it once. The, ground, the grass right now is a good foot or higher. They aren't doing any weed whacking. They aren't doing the sewers maybe every other week or every three weeks. Uh, you know, we're paying this guy to do the work. Uh, the firehouse, they don't weed whack at all, hardly. Uh, you know, there's a lot of donated help to build that firehouse. Can't we just keep it up so it looks halfway decent? You know, the rest of the property, I mean, the well house and everything looks like crap when you drive into town. And the sewer sites, you know, I kind of take a little pride in our sewer sites. We've had some recommendations from the state because they look so good. I'd hate to see them come right now. And besides that, we just put 360,000 in that one. So now you want to run it down? I mean, come on. When he goes to mow it now, it's going to kill everything that's there. So Terry, when you say down behind the school, are you talking the where the little league field is or over further by the over further so where our septic is okay over like where the old high school fields were that area no no it's down back the grade school oh okay i'm sorry excuse me <coughs> i had made mention to um the person that does the mowing uh once uh, about last week maybe a week and a half ago about this so i would have thought that by now he would have been caught up no i've mentioned it to you and i've mentioned this to frank uh but nothing's getting done i mean why are we paying him we aren't getting anything for it contract reads once a week or as needed you know so i have a talk with him there been done once. Can do. Yeah, well, but well, don't give them a check. That's plain to do. We'll have to have a talk with him. That's all we can do right now. I don't think we should be cutting him any checks anymore. Well, he's still mowing some of it. Well, dock him. We can do that too. Yeah. But we'll have a conversation with him. I mean, I just. You know, we put a lot of money in these systems, you know, two million into one, three hundred and sixty thousand in another, and you want to just let them go? Come on. No, we don't. No, we'll um we'll we'll yeah, we'll, we'll address it. Yep. Yeah. It should be um up and running now. It's pretty much spring has sprung for sure. So um yeah, we'll we'll um Thanks for bringing it. I've seen through. somebody down there mowing several times, but you know, I, I I couldn't tell you exactly how often. I just I've seen. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, good. Um, is there anything else on utilities? Did we ever um, um, enact that um, rate change that we we're going to do for the water? Well, I think we should really meet. I've got a lot of information and I got, got it all done, but I think we really should get together and do this in person. Okay. It'd be a lot easier to explain and to go over the numbers. Do you have those numbers on a sheet, Terry? Can you leave them in the office? I haven't got it. 
a hundred percent done so you can so you'd understand it okay is is that possible to do i should have it done tomorrow okay if you could leave that in the office we can all at least look at it so we have an idea of what we're looking at would be good Excuse me, but Terry, we just... really need to get on this because we're failing a lot more so than you think is this water and sewer rate change excuse yeah. me correct yeah okay thank it you. hasn't been done for 15 years last time it was done in november of 06. wow well put the information in the office there so we can look at it yeah great um um, Jeff, has um, got any um, reports from the? Uh... Sure. Yeah, I guess that was one um, reason that they maybe didn't mow because we asked them not to mow in in ahead of the uh, the electric mow demonstration. But they were Terry's talking about more places than just that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, talking the only about the septic field. Yeah. 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 And the the. Our ask of John not to mow was just the ball fields down by the tennis courts. Yeah. Um, well, we had uh, the first of uh, a monthly lecture series uh, that the Energy Committee put on um, with uh, a presenter from Efficiency Vermont on heat pumps. Uh, this is done jointly with the library. Uh, we'll be doing that uh, monthly through October. Um, We've got the Mo Electric uh, commercial demonstration day coming up on Thursday this week. Um, scurrying around, cleaning up my grill and buying hot dogs and such, uh, borrowing pop-up tents. And we've got uh, three vendors coming of the only commercial grade uh, zero radius turn mowers, you know, big wide decks and quiet. Um, so that's happening. I've been. And when was that? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't write as fast as people talk. The, the 27th between 11 and 2. And that's the, the Mo. Um, Mo Electric. Mo Electric, thank you. Yeah. And uh, let's see, yeah, I was contacted by uh, Pittsfield, and I don't know how to pronounce her last name. She's a, the board chair down there. Um, and she would like to get the municipal, the Tri Town Municipal Committee back together. Um, I told her I'd be willing to do that, provided people did their did the work of getting you know things properly warned and showed up for meetings, or return phone calls to help me reschedule. Um, I've talked to Monica Collins. I haven't heard from her yet who Hancock's representative would be. Um, let's see what else we we did have the meeting with Green Mountain Power last week and did a walk through of Rochester or drive through of Rochester to take a look at siting for potential generation field. Um, looked at the substation pump house um, and Frank and I are going to meet tomorrow morning to uh, get a clear definition of the boundaries of what would be within the resiliency zone. Um, there are technical reasons and voltage differences that uh, won't enable us to quite capture all of what we consider the village. Um, but we need to get that defined so that uh, Green Mountain Power knows what the load is uh, that they're going to be needing to satisfy and what the storage needs would be. Um, let's see. And the, uh, the Ad Hoc Energy Committee renamed itself um, the Valley Energy and Climate Action uh, Committee. Um, we don't see any reason to exclude people from Granville, Hancock, Stockbridge, or Pittsfield. Um, and we know that there are some people in all of those towns that have interest in this. So we need to grow this uh, group and, and that would be a good way is to open it up to the Valley, the 100 Valley. And uh, finally, um, the Capstone uh, Agency, the Community Action Program Agency, um, that serves our region here. Um, it was, wants to come down and is going to utilize um, uh, the Energy Committee as a vehicle to talk with all of the towns uh, about how the Energy Committee might be, work as eyes and ears for the capstone uh, weatherization program. And hopefully then we can get people that have problems with their homes, particularly low income, um, homeowners or renters that have problems with the efficiency of their home serve through the free weatherization services that Capstone offers. Um, 
So we're stirring the pot and things are starting to happen a little bit. So Jeff, I have a question about the Green Mountain. Um, you know, I left that meeting a little early. So um, their scope is only in the village and that got a little bit smaller too. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, the, the scope would be the village. Um, where Peavine Drive, um, the river, river road across the way and Robinson Road, um, those were definitely um, not really feasible to connect to because of the grid. Frank can explain that better than I can. And then we, we were going down to the pump, the well pump house on 100, that would be the southern boundary. And to the east, it's, uh, there's one house on the right side of Brook Street and the cliff house is up to the Duggar's house those would be included, but, but anything outside of that would not. So it's mostly to the north and then going up Brook Street uh, um, and Bethel Mountain Road where it thins out and those would not be a part of it. And it's wherever the, the equipment is uh, at the appropriate voltage and, and uh, you know, it, I suppose one might be able to grab those other units, but you'd have to do a tremendous amount of work, probably the electrical system and probably make it not cost effective for GMP to do it. Okay, so no Brook Street beyond the first house and no Kennedy Drive. Uh, Kennedy Drive is in there as far as Kennedy Drive would be in there, Patty. Everything in the village ex at the junction of Brook Street. It's the old Clesson Blair house. Yep. And the cliff house is on the right. That's the end of it there. And the uh, A Hood apartment house. Right. Would be on the, in the village. Robinson okay. Avenue, Peavine Drive, uh, South, uh, the high school wouldn't be. The whole village would be. Uh, Wheatfield would be, and down to the pump house and everything in the village. Okay, and the high school would not be because- The high school wouldn't be unless we altered the, the, the service there. Okay, elementary has a generator, so it, that's- The elementary would be. It would be, but it has yes. a generator. <laughs> yep. It's pretty brilliant on his own already. Okay, yep. it's just, you know, people have interests, so they want to know, what about me? Yeah, the resiliency zone is basically, um, it's what Green Mountain Power can do uh, for itself, really. And where it comes in handy is they would look at putting the money, some of the money or most of the money up front for the facilities and the, and the equipment. And they could operate it any time they wanted to, to separate us from the grid, where we'd be on our own grid. But there's no, as far as incentives for the town, as far as power savings or anything like that, there would be none. Well, benefits though would be a good portion of the town is getting renewable energy. And right. globally, um, well, in, the, in Vermont, the use of the batteries for peak shaving helps keep down the peak costs. Right. Um, and, and that does get reflected on everybody's rates. To the extent. So it's, yeah. it's a town thing that we'd have to consider and look at. And they're going to size the grid to see what would work for our community for load capacity and all that to give us some idea of what we'd be looking at. So... We'll see. So, did they find a suitable uh, uh, a suitable solar spot in town? Yeah. yeah, the the ball field right by the little league field, all that area right there. That'd be ideal because it's right close to the grid and everything. Okay, and the river didn't bother them. Well, it's out of the floodplain. Yep, just that upper that area. That little yep. league field is out of the floodplain. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. 
And then finally, um, we did get uh, awarded as the participant for 2021 in the uh, Vermont uh, Council on, on uh, Rural Development's Climate Economy Model Communities Program. Um, Catherine Shankman and, and Vic Roboto and myself met with John Copens of uh, Vermont Council of Rural Development. Um, he explained how this program works and um, uh, uh, Vic and Catherine and I went through a, um, a meeting where we identified um, potential core people for a first meeting of this group. It, it's kind of a, a, a restart of Envision Rochester. We're going to definitely want to look at everything that was done there and then look at how we go forward. Um, and, and in particular, marrying uh, what we need to do to be sustainable and resilient in the future um, with energy needs, both municipally as well as the citizenry of the town. It should help us more rapidly develop a, a holistic plan and, and be ready, hopefully, for the uh, infrastructure monies uh, to file for grants and get her done. Perfect. Well, you know, uh, for a relatively new um, position or, or assuming the position of the energy coordinator, you're um, keeping quite busy. He is. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try. After we get a couple things done, I'm going to try to ratchet back a little bit. <laughs> That's why but, you're paying I mean, the big getting a few getting a few more recruits in the energy committee gives me the ability to, to delegate a few things yeah. And, yeah. and that makes it easy easier. So all right. Well get my sanity you. back after Mo Electric is done. Yeah. Well thanks for your energy. Um is that is that all? I don't want to cut you off. Yep. Um do we have anybody here to um speak from the library tonight? I don't think so. So um, on the new business, the other, um, um, we have a driveway permit for Martin Waters, which is on, um, on um, Brook Street there. And I had um, reached out, they have, they didn't put a, a, a drawing or a map of where exactly they want it to go. I think I can tell just by driving by that where, where they're parking their truck as it is now. Um, the, um, in talking with Cooter about it, he's pretty adamant that we maintain the swale that, that travels that um, south side of Brook Street there. And that would be, if we could see approving uh, that permit with that condition that they, they're not um, planning to, to fill in that swale and putting in a culvert there in conjunction with the swale does does not really compute very well so i guess we would really need to get clear with them about um you know their their thoughts and feelings about how that would work keeping that that swale so, so do you think we should just um, um table that until you have that continued conversation or approve it with the um <clears throat> prove it um um second yeah that stop that um approve it with that condition that we're not we're not compromising the swale i think we can approve it with that condition yeah all right yeah okay so what is the exact wording approved with um um with the condition that the um the existing swale will be um maintained Okay. I would think you'd want to have them put a design in there too, do them just to, so that they show it no, on the application. Yeah. yeah. So if it, so with the um, completion of their application with the with the drawing and the um, condition that the swale is is um, is kept in place. So I'd move to approve it with those conditions. I second that. All in favor? All right. Okay. So, Okay. Um, I don't know about your guys' agenda, but mine is starting to run out of stuff. I, I would just give a little update that we did get some uh, response from the state on, on the signage for the Bethel Mountain Road. 
and they are going to install signs on Route 100 and on Route 12 to uh, indicate that the posted road and so forth. I think I sent you folks an email on, on that to oh, show you what the signs look is this, like. Is this regarding big trucks, Frank? Is that what you're yes. talking about? Okay, I'm yes. sorry. Over, overloads and uh, 24,000 plus. So they would like us to get people together that live on that street to uh, jot down when they see a truck come down there and note the time and uh, the direction they're going in as far as coming down the hill, if they're coming down or they're going up. And if we could, you know, maybe pattern that for a month and see, mm -hmm. you know, if it's a continual use or if it's just an occasional. So if we could, uh, I thought I'd reach out to Catherine, somebody that's there a lot that could just, doesn't have to be accurate to just jot down a few things when they see it. So we can get some idea and we can also look at enforcing it a little bit that way, which is what they'd like us to do and reach out to the, the uh, DMV and, and all them folks. So you want them, anybody reading this could say they could call you if they've got a problem, if they, they see. Could, they no, they just, just give. keep a figure on it. And then, you know, okay. we can, we can collect it after a while and see if there's okay, a pattern you. there. Yep. That's kind of what the state is looking at, how they're addressing it. Yeah. Nancy, you have something you want to contribute? I, what kind of trucks are you specifically looking for? Well, I, I think they're looking at anything that, that could possibly be oversized. Like a big, long trailer truck? A trailer truck, a big box truck might be overloaded. I mean, there's there's a lot of things, and a lot of them may not be, but they just want to get it so that we have a, an idea of where they're coming from and where they're going. You know, as far as if they're coming and turning on off from Route 100 and going over, or are they coming from Route 12? That's kind of the direction. They want to know which direction they're coming from. So we, we'd need citizens to do that, to keep us aware of that. So then we can report back to them. And that may make them change some signage. They're still leaving it in the open to change things as they go forward, to put more signage in if they need to, or whatever this, this is not a an end necessarily it's just the beginning to try yeah. to yeah. alleviate the traffic a little bit Pat? yeah um i it, it's a, it's a good idea i'm a little apprehensive about calling in the public i certainly would not endorse anyone in the public to confront a truck driver to stop a truck uh, no, you know, no running out in the road. Um, I think an effective way of documenting it is um, have your phone handy and take a picture of that truck because they have DOT numbers and phone numbers on their doors or on the on the the, the box of the truck. Um, also, um, uh, we do get deliveries in Rochester, so some trucks may be using Bethel Mountain Road and they're not through traffic, they're actually delivering to Max store and the Skip Mart, stuff like that. So um, I don't want to uh, have people accusing our delivery people and in, in <laughs> having our does not get delivery. And um, uh, I just, uh, I when I was taking pictures and then I was calling the, the number that um, I was asking for dispatch, but I, I wouldn't encourage people to do that. Please just document it and 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 let us know and, and we will go to the next step. Um, I, I don't wanna create a situation where um, people are putting themselves in any type of danger running after trucks trying to get them to stop. So, oh no, I, I, they don't want us to do that. They just wanna to have a, some kind of idea of which way the trucks are coming from what kind mm -hmm. of trucks they are, that's all. What kind of pattern when they, when they're, if it gets a pattern of when it's, it happens more often, that would be easier to direct the 
um, enforcement activities at, 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 at the good times to, to, right. to hang out. Find the enforcement to yeah. when they're going to be there, you know, when they're coming. Local contractors have overweight permits that they pay right. down every year. So, um, you know, they'll get reported repeatedly. Um, you'll have dump trucks getting reported all the time. Um, and it should just be stated publicly that there is there is a process for local contractors to yeah. pay every year for an overweight permit, so they kind of are allowed, and they are also going locally. They're not we're yeah. we're tar the target through traffic, not just every truck that goes up and down the road. Yeah. All right, um, it's a step, like you said, it's the beginning, Nancy. Yeah, just a step. Yeah. We're not going to eliminate it. No. So I just have another thing. I'd like to shout out to Dick White um, and thank him for the work he did on the bandstand this week, this past week, and also the flagpole uh, in preparation for painting, um, which I think Frank has got Zeus coming to do the painting. And, and so we're going to get spruced up. So they're going to paint both the bandstand and the flagpole? Dick White. Just the lower parts. Zeus is, so, is donating his time. We're buying the paint. Um, he does have workman's comp. I've so struck working, out with about three or four painters already. So I don't know about the buildings. Everybody's going to be really busy from here on out. So I'm, I'm still in the process, but it might be canceled for this year that way because everybody's so busy. But I'll keep on it. So Nancy, the work that Dick White did on the bandstand to get it ready for painting? Well, he just did some repairing of rotted wood. Okay, so in preparation for painting, is he going to do the painting as well? No, he just, Frank just told you that Zeus is. Okay, that's right, I'm sorry, excuse me. All right, um, last call, anyone else have something to talk about? I think, um, there's still some nice light for gardening. That's where I'm going. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for all your hard work. Okay, thank you. You want you want my woodchuck? <laughs> no, <laughs> you can um, join mine. Yeah. Yeah, I just lost all, all the lettuce I planted over really? the weekend. No. Every single one piece. Has yeah. anybody had trouble with a bear? Because a friend of mine who lives in in Randolph, right near the hospital on Rosewood Drive, has this big bear that came and um, tore up her garden and, and tore her, her little tool shed and knocked it all over the place. And she saw it, she got pictures of it doing it. So she knows it. And it was a big bear, yikes. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that, but. <laughs> no, I haven't, hope not. All right. <laughs> so um, be well, everyone. And yep. um, I'll see you around town. Have a good evening. Thank you folks, night. Bye-bye. Okay.